Google and Solo.io have launched the next iteration of Istio, the Ambient Mesh. And if you ask me, it's gonna change the service mesh landscape forever. In this video, we'll see what on earth the Ambient Mesh really is, how it solves the biggest challenge of adopting Istio, and finally, how you can get started with it today. But first, a quick refresher. Traditionally, service meshes have used the sidecar pattern to do their magic. All inbound and outbound traffic is transparently intercepted by this sidecar right here to implement cool things like automatic MTLS, observability, and traffic control. I bet you already knew this. But this has a couple of problems. First, running a full-fledged proxy beside every application has higher cost since you need a provision for peak load. Second, the proxy increases the pod's startup time, making the process of scaling slow. And third, upgrading the mesh itself becomes a challenge because your application is literally tied to it. If you thought Istio is hard, managing it is worse. The process of upgrading a mesh requires us to first upgrade the control plane followed by the data plane. That's cool. But since the data plane is directly coupled with our applications, the upgrade process requires restarting each one of our apps. This makes the process tricky. The Ambient Mesh tries to solve all the problems we just spoke about by taking a slightly different approach. Instead of having one proxy per application, it goes with the one proxy per node approach. This effectively decouples the data plane from our applications, operationally speaking. So the new architecture will look something like this. As a result, the act of upgrading the data plane is as simple as rolling out this daemon set. And since our pods no longer have a sidecar, they start up faster. And it doesn't end here. The Z-tunnels, as these proxies are called, work exclusively on layer 4, which deals with TCP traffic. Its primary function is MTLS, authentication, and L4 authorization. In other words, it's responsible to implement zero trust. But what about L7 traffic? That's where the concept of waypoint proxies come in. Whenever you need L7 features like request routing and automatic retries, your request will be routed through a waypoint proxy. This proxy is HTTP aware and can take care of all those functions for us. The best part, since it's running as a separate deployment altogether, it can automatically scale based on the network load, which wouldn't be otherwise possible when using the sidecar approach, optimizing costs further. Okay, I bet a few of you are skeptical about the ambient mesh. Let me address your concerns. The first concern, the waypoint proxies will increase request latencies even further. Well, according to the Istio team, not really. The thing is, given how fast networking in the cloud has gotten, the major bottleneck in a service mesh isn't the extra hop. It's L7 processing. I'm including the computation required to route traffic, split it during canaries, and extract request metrics like throughput and traces. And the fact that the waypoint proxies can scale independent of our applications means we can scale as traffic increases. This is a good thing. Now, I'm not saying that the waypoint proxy approach will be faster than the sidecar approach. Sure, if you provision your sidecars for peak loads, that's going to be faster. But it's also not very really cost effective unless you have an extremely consistent traffic pattern. Moreover, you can always use the sidecar approach alongside the ambient mesh to get the best of both worlds. The next concern some of you may have is security. I'm just gonna say that splitting TCP and HTTP processing has several benefits in terms of security as well. I don't want to cover it now. This probably deserves its own video, so if you want to understand the architecture from a security point of view, just drop in a comment. And while you're down there, hit the like button. It really helps. Finally, the fun part. Let's take the ambient mesh for a spin. Now, since this feature is still experimental, I wouldn't suggest you upgrade your existing mesh just yet. Okay, so I just downloaded the preview version of Istio and have made sure my Kubernetes cluster is up and running. Now simply run Istio Cuddle install with the ambient profile to install Istio. It will take a few moments and that's it. On probing around, you'll find that Istio has installed two additional daemon sets. Istio CNI is responsible to intercept routes and direct them to Z-Tunnel, which is our proxy. Now I already had some services running in my default namespace. I can get all of them to be a part of my mesh by simply adding this one label to my namespace. And just like that, we have mutual TLS. 
The ambient mesh is just half the story. You need to check out this video if you want to learn how on earth can you configure Istio to actually take advantage of it. Do like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and don't forget, I am your tech bud here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.